Rahim Kita buka majlis kita dengan surah Al-Fatihah dulu Okay um, Saya nak invite Adin untuk baca doa Adin ada? Ada Okay Auzubillahirrahmanirrahim Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alamin Wassalatu wassalamu ala ashrafil anbiya wa rasulin sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in Allahumma akhtah alayna hikmataka wa asyuk alayna min hazaini rahmatika ya arhamar rahimin Rabbi syrahli sadri wa yasili amri wa ahlu ukhdatan min lisani ya kawkali Sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa barik wa salam Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alamin Okay, thank you Adin Um So uh, saya nak brief sikit lah tentang untuk uh, session hari ini. So kita akan cover dua topik. Satu is uh, peripheral nerve injury. Satu lagi is hand examination. Uh, kita start dengan peripheral nerve injury dulu boleh ke Mr? Boleh je, boleh je. Kita start dengan lecture dulu okay. buat practical. Tapi again I would like to remind mm. that the practical session ni yeah, purpose is actually more for you tanya question je. Apa yang you may not. Hello. Lagging ke jap internet? Uh, okay. Boleh dengar ke? Boleh boleh. Ha ah, okey. Okey. Uh, kalau macam tu kita proceed terus lah dengan So kita ada tiga uh, presenter Kita start dengan the first one lah Mohana untuk present median nerve injury Mohana ada? Mohana hmm, Kalau mana problem kita boleh start dengan presenter lain okay. eh, um, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim um, Dengar Disangkut-sangkut sikit mana? Hello? Hello? Rasa macam Mohana punya internet very bad eh? Kalau tak kita bagi orang lain dulu, start dulu sementara dia serta internet dia Okay. Jadi kita dengar tak? Uh, Mana? Dengar ke? Saya nengking lah. Mana kita start cerita lain lagi? Dengar tak? Uh, next presenter kita uh, jemput Hazrik lah untuk present Alna Nerve Injury. Okay, Assalamualaikum semua. Apa khabar? So, uh, I'm going to present about about Alna Nerve lah. Okay, so uh, let's start presenting. Semua dah nampak screen eh? Okay, this so, uh, semua nampak kan? Alright, so AM, a 26 year old Bangladeshi furniture factory worker complained of progressive weakness and numbness of his left hand for six months. Previously well, no pain except for a light ache over the middle aspect of the left elbow. So neurological examination, sensory loss over the hand as shown in the figures. Okay, so what do you think uh, distribution of this? So <laughs> as uh, you already mentioned, I'm going to present about 
Oh, no, no. So I am Ahmad Azib bin Ashad with the material number 1511283. So let us start with what run on earth. So basically, these are my outline for the presentation. I will go through the etiology of the anal ablation, the anatomy, the clinical relevance, which we, which we see, which physical examination that we might find uh, anal nerve injury, and then a little bit about investigation and management. Okay, mostly I would like to cover more on the anatomy and the clinical relevance in this presentation. Okay, for the etiology of the anal nerve, the nerve lesion, under nerve lesion most commonly affected the elbow side and followed by the wrist. But uh, uh, due to the location, so different location, different etiology. So we go to first the etiology at the elbow, what uh, can give rise to the under nerve lesion. It can be due to acute trauma, nerve compression, fraction of friction, and also interest it causes. So trauma you can have like distal humeral fracture. Uh, nerve compression can have like leaning on the elbow or prolonged elbow flexion or intrinsic causes uh, such as uh, inflammation like arthritis or synovitis that may cause uh, an nerve lesion at the elbow. As for the etiology at the wrist, which is uh, the second most uh, side of the elbow for the anal nerve lesion, it can be divided into extrinsic causes or intrinsic causes. Uh, so because it can be due to any fracture, like hip or hammock. So this is, uh, we, can, we can see later on on the anal nerve, anal nerve, the cause of the anal nerve. It can also have that laceration or any extensive cause like trauma, laceration, and handlebar palsy. This is uh, uncommon, but it can present an, uh, with mild neuropraxia and intrinsic causes, the, uh, which may cause uh, due to ganglia uh, rising for the wrist joint or the intranural itself. Okay, so we've done with the etiology, and next we are going to uh, revise a little bit about the anatomy. So the most important thing about uh, any peripheral nerve, we should know about the cause of the peripheral nerve itself. So Azri, that is yes. you, uh, for, for the others also, uh, remember that not only fractures but dislocation is. Um, also a very common cause. Huh? Okay. Uh, much elbow dislocation. These things also cause compression to the nerve. So like if you have a wrist dislocation, it is a common cause. So the uh, displacement is a little bit more than the fracture. I see. Uh, so, okay. So, uh, basically, the energy I get from... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, later on, I will add on uh, what Mr. said. So, the other aesthetic causes which are more common is the restoration, uh, sorry, bone displacement. All right. So, we can give to the rest uh, another an affliction. Okay. So, uh, the etiology, this uh, I get from uh, up to date website. Okay. And next, we go to the uh, under nerve anatomy. So, as we know, you can see here, Allah oh, Akbar. Okay, so here we can see anal nerve is usually derived from the C7, C8, and T1, and and then it, it will go to the mid uh, brachial plexus, and anal nerve come from the medial cord of the brachial plexus, and then it goes down, it goes down behind the medial epicondyle of the humerus right here, and then um, it, it enters the forearm right here. Um, in between flexor carpi anaris muscle, and then it goes down. Uh, but before you can see here, eh? before that, it, it go uh, give branches into two nerves. First, FDP muscle, flexor digitorum profundus, particularly the fourth and fifth digits, and then flexor carpi anaris. Okay, and then it goes down between these two muscles, flexor digitorum profundus, and also flexor carpi anaris, and then it enters the hand. Uh, lateral to the PC form and hamid bone, which are the lateral bone of the hand bone, uh, the metacarpal bone, okay, the, the, uh, the, sorry, uh, no, the medial side, okay, the medial side, which is the PC form and hamid form, lateral to the bone. Uh, it's actually uh, during that time it enters Guyon's canal, okay, Guyon's canal, which, which will, I will show you later, the Guyon's canal, and then it give uh, branches, it and the, the branches to dorsal, motor, and also, sorry, uh, sensory and motor nerve, okay? Okay, this, uh, okay. So you can see uh, three points here. 
enters to the flexor kappa analyst, give branch into FBP, F, uh, FCU, goes down, and then uh, enters Guyan Canal into the hand. Okay, the cause of the ulnar nerve. Okay, this is what I uh, said to you, the uh, ulnar tunnel, or it's known as Guyan's Canal. So when this tunnel, it, have, it has its own uh, roof, the floor, and also the media and lateral border. So you can see here, this the lateral border, and this is the med this is the medial border, and this is the lateral border. This is the floor. So mixed by so you can see, uh, this this is uh, actually the record that. Uh, hold on, I think. Yeah. Okay. So basically, what is in the tunnel is only under nerve and under tree. That's why it is called under tunnel and guyan canal. And regarding the floor and the whatnot, uh, we can remember based on the anatomy that I said to you just now, under nerve it goes lateral to the PC form. Yeah, it goes lateral to the PC form, which is the medial metacarpal bone, the most medial met metacarpal bone. Okay. Okay. Uh, this slide I would like to show you the more um, more what you call systematic um, classification of the branches. So you can see here, this is how I want to show you the motor in innovation of the ulnar nerve. Uh, here we have the hypotenar group, tenar group, and intrinsic group. Okay, basically the hand of uh, the, the muscle hand consists of tenar group, tenar group muscle, hypotenar group muscle, adductor pollicis, uh, lumbricum, and also interossi. Okay, interossi further divided into palma and also dorsal. About the hypotena is uh, more the, 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 the name of the hypotena group and tina group muscle is almost the same with memang 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 same dengan tina group muscle which are abductor flexor dengan opponent digit, uh, opponent so sama je nama-nama ni memang ada juga dekat tina group muscle cuma beza dia ini digit minimi hypotena ni but then if we go to tina group it will call policy brevis so policy brevis ni mainly uh, supplied by the median nerve but we are concerned here about the hypotenar group is only, um, what you call that? Oh, uh, the hypotenar group lah. So this is uh, supplied by ulnar nerve. And then we have uh, some lumbar lumbrical interocyte also supplied by ulnar nerve again. And this we got adductor policies ulnar nerve again. Okay, this is the, mas the motto innovation here. But here, before that, um, in the forearm, we have two important nerve that we should know about the motor innovation which are flexor digitorial profundus and flexor carpi analis. But later in clinical relevant that I would like to tell you the most important two innovation that I would like to it is important is the flexor digitorial profundus here and also uh, lumbricals and also intracellular muscle. Okay uh, this is also to uh, give you uh, more systematic about the you see that uh, the under nerve, when it touch the hand, it touch the into the Guyan's canal here, okay, and then it, it before it goes into branches, so here it goes to the deep terminal branch, which will cover the motor innervation mostly, which cover the hypotena group, interossa, and also lumbricals, and here is the sen uh, superficial terminal branch, which covers the sensory innervation, okay. Okay, this is again uh, about the sensory cutaneous branch innervation. So this is to say, to say that the under nerve only cover uh, one and a half digit medial side of the fingers, okay? Or under side, you call it. Only un uh, one and a half digits. Okay, so the first clinical relevant that I would like to tell you, so this is basically just a table. I found it on a Google image. So. I would like to precise, uh, com sorry, to emphasize on the ulnar nerve only. So piece up, why? Because just now we we see that there is, you can see, ah, dorsal interocyte and also palmar interocyte. But do you still remember what are the function of the dorsal interocyte and palmar interocyte? So you just remember that and that. So this is I get from lecture, uh, Dr. Imad Nafik punya lecture, not. So palmar interossi, we give the finger abduction. Dorsal interossi, give finger abduction. So give pat that. So that's why make peace. So we ask the patient to make peace. 
That's why we call uh, peace sign lah kat sini. Okay, so this is the interosal muscle lah. Palma and dorsal. Okay, so this is uh, the ulnar nerve that I already run across. I already tell you uh, in the previous slide already. So if you want to read, you can read here about the cause. The second relevant uh, sign is the formal signs. Okay, formal sign, like I told you just now, the most important muscle that I would like to tell you is, is regarding adductor policy, one of it. So what happened? So when there is formal sign positive, the patient uh, cannot adapt the thumb. So it calls parasite for the adductor policy. So what happened is that in order for the patient, okay, oh, sorry, the formal sign is that we give paper to patient. We ask the patient to hold the, the paper with uh, adduction of the finger, adduction of the thumb, like this. If the, uh, the patient is not affected by any injury of the ulnar nerve, um, at the risk uh, that I said, so the patient uh, we can hold with normal adduction of the thumb. But if there is lesion, there is perisive of the adductor policies, okay? So it will be replaced by the pinch function, but the flexor policy is longer. So the thumb is slightly flat, okay? So this is what we call from a positive sign. So this is just to show you how adduction and abduction finger is, but we are concerned about the adduction, okay? So that's the second clinical relevance. And the third one is about the ulnar claw. So ulnar claw is actually the parasite of the middle two lumbricol because we know that ulnar nerve gives, uh, we, uh, we innovate the ulnar side of the and I said of the medial two digits. So the function of the lumbic curls, it will flex the metacarpal joint here and extension of the interphalangeal joint here. So distal and proximal, both of it, it will get extended. And it will flex the metacarpal joint here. But when there is injury, it will cause paralysis for the medial two lumbic which give reverse to this. When you reverse, it will give to extension of the MCP. So you can see a CT is extensed there, and then flexion of both interphalangeal joint here. Okay, so that is ulnar claw. It is due to paris over the middle two rhombic All right, so this is the most common uh, favorite question by the lecturer. What do you understand by ulnar paradox? Okay, the very favorite question. Okay, so basically, why it is paradox? Paradox means contradiction. So something is contradicting. So what happens is that we understand that um, most people uh, understand that the higher the nerve palsy, the greater the deformity. But in ulnar paradox, so the contradicting is part is that the closer to the paw, the worse the claw. It means that the lower the lesion, the greater the deformity. Okay? Or other words, you can say that the closer to the paw, the closer to the palm, we give the worse the claw. So Explanation is that we go back to the cause of the ulnar nerve. That's why it is very important to know the innovation of the flex, uh, the ulnar nerve. Okay, here I see to you, it enters between the flexor carpa anaris and then it gives um, branches into flexor digital profundus and also flexor carpa anaris here. So, why the high lesion is not having the greater deformity because so the high lesion is that uh, the lesion was at the elbow side, the low lesion is there at the wrist uh, side, okay? So high lesion will, will not give a great deformity. Instead, the, uh, the, the low lesion or the wrist lesion gives the deform deformity because of this, because of the location of the flexor digital profundus branching right here. So you can see it branch after it enters the forearm, you can see. So let's say there is a lesion here, okay? High lesion, it will cause paralysis of the nerve going to the flexor digital profundus. So when the nerve is paralyzed, so the medial two digit cannot be flexed. When it cannot be flexed, meaning it will, cannot, it will be less claw or the claw deformity will be less pronounced. If the lesion is here, it will uh, cause the, the flexor digital profundus nerve is still intact. That's why it can still keep uh, flat. So the function of the flexor digital profundus can be executed as usual. So that's why the lower lesion, the closer to the pore, the worse the claw because of the intact, the, uh, the nerve to the flexor digital profundus. 
Okay, so you don't worry. I already write to you like uh, right here. Okay, high lesion, FDP, both are paralyzed. Both of these will be paralyzed in high lesion at the elbow side. Okay, so the quality of infinity will be less pronounced. While the low lesion, the LDP is still functioning, the quality of infinity is more pronounced. So you can see because of the because of the function of the LDP is still intact or functional. So that's why it's more pronounced. Give rise to the, the closer to the pore, the worse the claw. Okay, that's uh, simply how do we understand the HANA products. Okay, uh, these two points I would like to say to you that, uh, okay, we know that when there is a paralysis of the FDP, there will be lost ability to flex, but only the dist uh, uh, up to anti distal phalanges. But this, uh, we could see here, okay, so this is the proximal, this is distal, sorry, okay, this is distal. This is proximal. The flexor digital profundus we goes down to here. So FDP, the distal phalanges cannot be flexed. But the inter, inter sorry, proximal interphalangeal joints still can be flexed because of there is still action of the flexor digital superficialis. Because of what? Because FDS is completely supplied by the medium nerve. Now we are concerned about the anal nerve only. Okay, the still phalanges only cannot be flexed. Uh, but FDS still can flex. So the, your proximal phalanges are still able to flex because of the supplication by the median nerve. Okay, so to answer that, another products, high lesion, low lesion. And you just know because of the FDP innovation is up here. Okay, so why we, uh, there is lesion here, it will give rise to the uh, greater deformity. Not and not, uh, sorry, not good at okay? Sorry, 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 silap, terbalik. Okay, bila dia ada lesion kat sini, maknanya, dia paralyzed. Bila paralyzed, less pronounced. And then, yang ni, yang sebaliknya, because the function is still more, uh, claw deformity is more pronounced because function dia intact. Okay, itulah. Dia ada paradox. Okay, uh, this is my last few lights. So, this is the compression of the Guyon's, Guyon's canal. So you see that the, uh, in the etiology yang I listed just now, there is uh, about the handle bar. So this is actually actually to show you an nerve compression by the PC form or the hamid form, uh, hamid bone here, uh, because the punya position of the hand tu lah, handle bar tu. So kat sini, uh, in this diagram, I would like to show you there are three zones of compression. Okay, this is before they give branches into deep motor and superficial sensory. So kalau kat only zone two ni only it will affect the deep motor deep the uh, uh, division while number three ni they will affect the superficial sensory division lah. Okay so kalau dia compress kat sini the sensation will be um, impact kalau kat sini the motor like hypotina ke lambricus or interosa yang akan be impact. Okay kalau kat sini it can be both lah motor or sensory. Okay, we finish already the clinical event that I want to share. Uh, kalau ada kurang ke boleh tambah lepas ni. And then uh, regarding the investigation, usually the, the analysis uh, is clinical. But if we need, if we have like suspicion. Yeah, so what uh, do you sorry. look for in inspection of a patient? What do you expect to see in a patient with classical ulnar claw hand? Bukan physical examination, uh, bukan um, special test tau. Physical, uh -huh. apa, inspection sahaja. Inspection. So, kalau inspection, uh, I would like to inspect also for hypotina wasting because of uh, kalau severe form of uh, anal nerve injury yang affect the motor innovation. So, macam di dalam, dalam ini tak innovated, so you can give rise to wasting of the hypotina muscle. So, I would like to look for that. Other than anal claw. Lagi, lagi. Ada banyak lagi finding dia. Ada lagi, ya. Eh? Hmm. Not sure, Mister. Muscle in the hand kan banyak. Oh, muscle. Muscle ah. in the breast claw dengan petina apa lagi? Kau nampak? Petina dengan petina, ada dalam berika, interosai. Ha, so you see dalam berika, swisted kan? Ah, let me come with you. So, what do you call that twisting? Kekat sih. Okay. Anak kata. Baik, bang. Anak kata. Ah, anak kata. Oh, anak kata. Okay. So you see, you see anak kata. Right, fine. Okay. Okay.
Betul, you can okay. also in some patients, kalau macam if it's a proximal lesion, you can see that the FCU and FDP is wasted. Therefore, the mean forearm is smaller compared hmm. to the other type. Especially kalau dia affecting the do, the dominant hand. So, sepatutnya dominant hand is always larger than the non-dominant hand. Tapi in that patient, terbalik pula. Uh, so, these are the things that you highlight in your examination. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Mister. So, I miss the wasting. So, wasting you have like uh, yang tadi dah macam kita cakap Anna kata. Alright. Due to the lambika dengan interosal punya wasting. Okay. For the investigation, we have suspicion of the ulnar nerve injury. We can do electrodensity testing such as nerve conduction study or needle electromyography. Right here that I show you. And then we can also do imaging if we suspect because it is useful the analysis test for ulnar neuropathy but however I'm not sure whether we do it or not, but we can do, uh, based on this is what I get from up to date, uh, I can imagine can, we can do MRI and atrosonography. And it said that it is a useful diagnosis test for ana neuropathy at the elbow. But only at the elbow, okay? Okay, for the management, it can be due to, uh, can be conservative measure and surgical intervention. We can put spleen, pads, kalau color pads tu, kalau basically tu kita tak pads, so there will be less contact lah dengan uh, handlebar. Okay. Activity modification, evidence of public factor and nerve gliding exercises. So this is, uh, I show you one example for the cubital tunnel, uh, nerve gliding exercises. Usually kalau buat ni, saya, saya baca tadi kat Google sikit dia cakap untuk uh, patient yang ada pain. Tapi patient kita mostly dia akan datang dengan tingling and numbness dekat yang awal-awal case tadi kan saya tunjuk case kan. So most patient akan datang dengan tu lah dia rasa Uh, numbness dekat situ. Okay, so the patient can do this kalau dia ada pain. And then surgical invention can do ulnar nerve decompression or transposition. Okay, that's all for my presentation. Any question or any addition to add? Any points to add? How do you know whether a patient requires surgical intervention or not? Um, you should attend oh. the call. Uh, okay. Kau nak advise patient for surgery or not? Surgery ni selalunya kita buat kalau yang saya baca tadi kat tudik sikit dia cakap kalau memang memang complete loss of the muscle and dia punya terlalu weakness dia tu strong sangat. So based on dia punya severity of the symptom jugalah mister yang saya faham. Um, the easiest guideline is just as long as there is a motor effect Uh, you you would advise for surgery. Kalau patient tu uh, symptom unbearable, still kita macam contohnya setakat numbness, apa tingling sensation semua kan, you can ask patient to try conservative for six weeks and if this, the symptoms either a static and unbearable, or, um, then you can proceed with surgery lah. Tapi yang memang kalau kita patient datang first presentation, you not offer surgery straight away, is be if there is already motor wasting, muscle wasting, it shows the severity. Okay, Mr. Thank you. Yeah, Hazri. Uh, I yeah. want to ask, uh, just now in the in the, the anatomical course of uh, ulnar nerve, uh, you said that uh, the ulnar nerve will branch into the sensory branches and the motor branches only after they pass through the Guyon scanner, right? So, uh, if let's say if there is any lesions in the Guyon scanner, uh, would there be sparing of uh, only the motor will be affected or almost always both will be affected? Uh, you mean which one? Apa? Tadi kan I show you the zone of compression kan? So uh, It can I... occur separately on sensory and then or, or the motor oh. only. Uh, based on the based on the zone of the going scan affected kadi ada tiga zone you can ada uh, zone 1 zone 2 zone 3 so better let me show you again kot so basically ada tiga zone kan kalau zone 1 tu basically both uh, memang motor sensory okay you can see here mm kat sini slide ni Okay, dia ada tiga zone of compression of the screen and then kalau one ni boleh affect both sebab dia, dia ada kat tengah, -tengah kan kat terang ni before they go into divided so kalau kat zone tu ni deep motor je lah yang akan affected 
Kalau 3D Spatial sensory dia akan affected Kalau 1 can be both lah Menjawab ke Muzaki? Okay, faham uh, Cuma uh, I wonder macam in Yang mana komen? So on Mr punya experience Usually Which zone yang will be uh, Affected One, two Mr boleh tunjukkan Yang mana yang common? Uh, well actually it's a little bit difficult to say which is more common because it depends on your patient Kalau macam injury, kalau laceration wound Biasanya uh, dia akan affect more proximal kan so kena tapak tangan uh, Zone 2, zone 3 ni a little bit rare so bila patient datang memang both numbness and motor is lost Tapi kalau compression, ganglion, um, these kind of things depend Some present in zone 2, some present in zone 3, some present in zone 1 Tapi kalau if you're looking at fractures around the hemate ke the PC form ah, It's usually surrounding the bone itself lah When mula-mula dia present as numbness of the cold finger Tapi as the edema subsides Then dia discarding je, ah, then dia akan lain the presentation dia So there's no like This is more common than that one ah, tak, ya. that, tak perlu tahu As long as when you examine You know that oh okay it's not Uh, uh, it's not weird untuk tiba-tiba eh kenapa motor dia affected, sensory tak affected atau yang sebaliknya uh, sebab so, pada korang belajar oh patutnya sensory and motor sama-sama affected uh, this is the reason why because it actually branches a bit more down there okay thank you Mr. thank you Mr. thank you Azri thank you Mr. ada lagi ke Mr. for Ananaf Uh, I would like to ask uh, for Anna Chloeing, it is uh, a combination of hyperextension of uh, MCP joint and flexion of uh, DIPJ, right? Yeah, betul. Okay, so uh, for now uh, I just cannot understand why there is hyperextension of MCP. Why uh, not just uh, in normal position. Why it must hyper extension? Okay, so soalan dia tu uh, mudah je nak jawab. Sebenarnya macam ni kita kena tahu yang sebenarnya uh, nerve tu kan dia bagi dia motor nerve tu dia akan go to apa nama? Kat sini. Lambrical. Ah, lambrical. Okay, so okay. yang function yang affected tu sebenarnya lambrical Kat sini dia ada interosai lah, diabetes polisis Tapi kita fokus kat lambrical je okay. Yang anak keluar ni dia ada gadian dekat lambrical Okay Okay, so kita kena tahu uh, normal function of the lambrical So normal function dia ialah flexion of MCP Ada yeah. extension of IP So kalau ada claw, uh, so kalau ada injury to the nerve, uh, under nerve So dia akan jadi reverse je lah dia akan jadi, kalau instead of flexion of MCP, dia akan jadi extension of the MCP Kalau extension of IP, dia akan jadi flexion of IP uh, Sorry Hazri yeah. Sorry Hazri, I think uh, It's not just simple like that Sepatutnya, yang flexion of IP tu, dia terjadi sebab kita ada FDP Hmm Ah. Uh. Oh post. okay, faham faham uh. So I know put extension from FDP also Tapi uh, FDP Okay faham So huh? sekarang ni kita okay, faham tak faham, faham masalah ini uh, Oh okay faham Sekarang ni kita issue dia ialah IP Tadi IP yang uh, I cakap tadi ke hujung-hujung tadi Kita ada flexor digitorum profundus dengan flexor digitorum superficialis Okay kalau superficialis ni memang tak kacau Superficialis ni memang sampai dekat uh, proximal phalanges sahaja which is cover by median nerve Okay so memang kat sini akan flex jugalah de dekat uh, nama apa proximal interphalanges ni tapi flexion ni flexion of the distal flexion of distal of uh, interphalanges because of uh, nerve uh, dia cover flexor digitorum profundus So what happen okay. dia akan jadi less claw so ataupun dia akan jadi so bila dia oppose the uh, nama apa tu? No. Uh, sekarang ni, uh, I, I just need the explanation why there is hyper extension of MCP Oh, hyper extension okay. of MCP um, It's sort of like this <coughs> Is the extensor working? Extensor working, yes okay. Extensor is working 
What flexes the MCPJ? What flexor of MCPJ? Uh, flexor lumbrical. Lumbrical and introsial lah. Yes, flexes MCPJ and extends the IP uh, the uh, interphalangeal joints. Betul. Yes. Okay, so itu faham eh? Okay, so when your ulna nerve is a low lesion, what happens is that flexion of the IP joints, eh, sorry, flexion of the MCP joint is lost. Betul? Okay. Okay, pada masa sama, extension of the interphalangeal joint is lost also. Betul? Okay, alright. Tetapi, <coughs> so what you get, you cannot flex and you can, you cannot flex MCP and you cannot extend IPJ. So basically you get some form of macam partially flexed finger sebab betul tak? Yes. Nah, ini disuatkan FDS. Tapi kenapa dia hyper extend? Because the EDC is still pulling. Uh, what, uh, pardon Mr? The EDC, extensor digital oh. communis. Okay, okay, okay. So the ED, instead of usually you have your FDP, FDS pulling on the flexion side, you also have your uh, intrinsic muscles pulling or in effect so in your in the case of ulnar nerve palsy benda tu semua dia so unopposed extension lah okay so it, uh, because of the unopposed extension of edc lah mister yes correct okay thank you mister okay thank you sir adin for the question any more question uh, Mr. Uh, I have a question. Actually, it's more of a practical question. Um, actually, uh, because uh, I'm, my question is relating to compressive neuropathy. So, um, what is the use of nerve conduction study and uh, electromyography if we can um, diagnose uh, the pathology based on clinical, Mr. Is there any additional um, indication as to why we do it? And uh, do we commonly do it, Mr.? Um, all these nerve, in, uh, nerve compressions are you really because of uh, when you go to the examination, you fall into the classical feature. Okay? There, that be, unfortunately, in some cases, it doesn't fit in your 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 classic feature. Macam contohnya yang tadi tu, uh, zone 2 ke, zone 3 ke, zone 1 ke, kan lain daripada lain. Atau tidak, you have uh, let's say for example, you have wasting of the FTP, you have wasting of the SPU, uh, but you have also wasting of the in the hands also. Now, you think, oh, okay, maybe go on other. Uh, eh, sorry, could be tetangga. But bila you buat probability test, it's not really obvious. So you're not sure where exactly is the site. But if it's blocked, if, if it's blocked at the elbow, it can actually not be blocked purely at the elbow. It can be all the way up the leher. So maka tu lah kita akan request for all these EMD or nerve conduction studies when you really need to find it exactly where. Okay, understood mister. Thank you. Uh. Okay, thank you Kelah for the question. Any more question for Ananav? Assalamualaikum. Uh, I have one question regarding the ulnar claw. We can see if the typical classifications, the fifth finger is more pronounced to be affected compared to the fourth finger. I remember in our orthopedic posting, Mister has explained uh, the reason why the fifth finger is more pronounced uh, flexion compared to the fourth finger in low lesion. Uh, but I can't recall it. Is is anyone? Why is it so? If the finger punya hyper, ada hyper extension ke? So, the fifth finger will have a more pronounced flexion compared to the fourth finger. Okay, flexion of the IPJ. Are you sure about that statement ke? Kau salah understand ke fifth finger yang lebih pronounced extension? Extension ke flexion? Flexion. Eh ke extension lah. <laughs> flexion. Tapi something regarding the fifth finger and the fourth finger lah Mr. Mr. pernah explain. 
Kalau yes. EDC kan, kalau EDC kan kita ada uh, untuk fourth and fifth finger. Tapi untuk fifth finger kan ada EDM sekali, extensor digit minimi untuk extension dia. Okay, that's why the fifth finger is more pronounced hyper extended compared to the fourth finger. Yes, tapi yang tu tak payah highlight sangat lah. I think as long as you can see that is hyper extended, I'm, uh, I think the examiner should be happy now. Okay, thank you. Jadi semua-semua details ni uh, takut nanti kalau misunderstand kan susah buat orang. Okay, thank you Mr. Faris. Ada lagi? Kalau tak soalan kita proceed next punya presenter lah. Okay. Okay. Uh, Mohana dah okey ke? Boleh dengar tak sekarang? Ha, boleh ke? Okay. So kalau macam tu saya present eh. Um, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. So I'm sorry about tadi. I'm not sure what happened and I didn't actually correct anything pun. Dia tiba-tiba jadi. So if tiba-tiba dia jadi rosak tengah-tengah saya present, just inform me uh, that you are lagging or I cannot hear you. Okay. Uh, everybody can see the slide? Yes, yes. Uh, hello. All right. So this is my contents. I will start with uh, the course, supply, kapatana syndrome, examination, lotion versus high lesion. Okay. So before we start, put in your mind that middle nerve is very easy. Okay. It's very easy. Okay. So next. So course dia, kalau tadi, uh, ni saya tak nak tekankan sangat. But you just know that it's from the medial and lateral cord. So, eh. Hmm. Mana dia? So, korang. Right. Uh, so, that in the arms, it will run in the middle arm. Um, anterior compartment, which is medial to bicep and brachialis. Tapi apa yang saya nak sini ialah bila kita nak masuk when it want to enter the form. Sorry, I'm um, late sikit. You will run under the bicep upper neurosis. So the, yeah. the the highlighted in red is actually where uh, the possible site mana? Let's mana? of median nerve. Boleh dengar ke so mana? So this is called bicep neurosis and then in the forearm it will run between two heads of parenteses. So this ini is one of the side of possible mana mana um possible compression of me in mana dengar tak so kalau kalau berlaku kat si we call it parenteses syndrome lah so uh, and then yeah. the four arm kaina you the branch first branch you enter in branches you read fdp and fpl Okay, the air conditioning. Huh? Oh, like. Mm. Hello? Okay. Sarang? Yeah. Oh, like. Sky lagging. 
Cuba cakap mana? Yes. Cakap. Cuba cakap continuous ni mana? Hello. Rasanya nak kena buat schedule lah untuk Mohana sebab dia punya background sound dia kuat and she's lagging so takut kita tegur pun dia tak dengar. Um, kesalahan boleh dengar tak? I know that I'm lagging but I don't know how to correct this. Hmm, usually the reason why you're lagging is because you connect connection. You have a good internet connection where you are. Ke kau kena buat macam student yang ada student yang dia orang panjat pokok untuk dapat internet connection? Definitely connect. not. So tak ada actually tak ada cara Mohana, kau kena you have to move around wherever you are or you even have to to the point that you have to present outside maybe your house supaya mana signal dia lagi clear because memang tak tak we, we I I don't know for the others lah but I cannot understand Kalau kita proceed dengan Nora boleh, boleh. dulu boleh ke? Dengar ke? Ya, yeah. elok dulu. Ha, boleh. Okay, boleh. Dengar eh. Ada masalah ke saya? Dengar. Oh, alright. Clear, clear. Terima. Sekejap eh. Okay, uh, hello everyone. Uh, dengar semua? Cuba respon sikit. Dengar, dengar. Dengar, dengar. dengar. Uh, okay, okay. Alright, alright, alright. Okay, alright. Thank you. Okay, thank you, thank you. Okay, uh, everyone. Uh, my name is Arif. Okay, I'm Fifi. I'm a okay. student. And my supervisor is Mr. Rafael. So, today we're going to discuss about radial nerve. Okay. Uh, walaupun mana lag tadi kan, tapi... Uh, saya dengar Mona cakap yang medial nerve senang lah. Tapi uh, bagi saya relatively radial nerve lagi senang saya. Mungkin bias tapi tapi lagi senang lah. Okay. Tengok eh radial nerve. Alright. Okay. Uh, I start with uh, with a case. Case ni, uh, this case is just uh, rekaan je. Okay. Tapi uh, dia ada clinical significant lah. Saya uh, just go through macam tu. Okay. 25 years old man. Presented with right elbow pain following motor vehicle accident. Okay. And he developed Uh, also an open wound at right elbow and then unable to extend right wrist okay uh bila macam ni kan okay uh, when when we see this unable to extend right wrist okay so uh, we already wa want to suspect that this patient uh, might have a radial nerve injury also uh, which is one of the common causes is motor vehicle accident right uh, or any trauma lah okay so uh, radial nerve okay as a general radial nerve It's uh, in the motor part. It's all about the extensors, the extensors of the arm, except one which is one flexor, which is the brachioradialis. Okay, that is one fact that we have to know first. So easy to remember all extensors of the arm and forearm, except the uh, 
except one one brachial radialis, which is the flexus. All right, that is the motor supply of the radial nerve. Okay, and then uh, okay, kita tahu dulu. Okay, lepas tu kita buat X-ray. Okay, and then when when we do X-ray, we see uh, this kind of of a fracture. Okay, there is a fracture at the area of the uh, distal humerus where uh, a complete fracture with spiral in, in nature and uh, near associated with twisting. Okay, so if we see a, a fracture like, like this, dengan presentation macam ni, okay, this is the classical uh, classical presentation of uh, fracture. Nama dia Holston Lewis fracture. Okay, sebenarnya ni, ni cuma teaser je. Nanti kita kita tengok lagi causes dia yang lebih. Okay, tapi ni classical lah. Eh? Alright, alright. Okay, so uh, this is what we we are going to do today. So first we are going to uh, just briefly look at the radial nerve, okay, the anatomy of radial nerve, and then we look at the clinical features of radial nerve palsy, which is uh, relatively easy. So about color examination and color person uh, at the video of hand examination, Mr. Rafael by Niswa, dia tak ada uh, radial nerve does not have any special test one, and tidak. So and then we are going to look at the causes of radial nerve palsy also. Okay. So first ah uh, we look at the radial nerve okay uh, in in general okay radial nerve lepas tu dia akan berpecah kepada posterior interosseous nerve okay which is posterior interosseous nerve poorly motor and also superficial sensory radial nerve nama pun sensory which is poorly sensory okay itu 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 je yang yang setakat nilah yang uh, yang yang kita uh, kita ingat dululah alright okay and then okay uh, this one this is the the highlight of to, of today's presentation in cranial nerve okay because it it explains uh, it explains much ah in the, in just one diagram all right okay so kejap eh mm all right okay so uh, firstly okay tengok semua uh, this is the motor supply eh motor supply start daripada posterior cord lepas tu uh, pergi kepada axillary nerve okay tricep okay uh, kalau kita tengok kat sini semuanya is a uh, extensor apa extensor carpi radial radialis longus okay uh, this one is responsible for the extension of the extension of the wrist okay a very strong extensor of the wrist okay so kita dah boleh teka lah if the our extensor carpi radialis which supplies by the radial nerve kita rosak and what happen is cannot extend so patient presented with wrist drop all right okay that is one okay next we look at the posterior interosseous nerve okay posterior posterior interosseous nerve the branch into posterior interosseous nerve deep group and posterior interosseous nerve super, superficial group okay we look at uh, yang bawah sini semuanya ialah extensor for ah uh, sorry satu ada abductor extensor untuk kita punya fingers so we can already uh, identify lah kalau if the lesion is here and patient cannot cannot uh, extend the, the the finger only tapi uh, wrist dia boleh okay one that one uh, one that we have to know okay if the contoh lesion lesion dekat sini kan okay lesion dekat sini lesion uh, here so the, the proximal to it is unaffected and the distal to it is affected okay itu itu yang rule rule dia yang yang kita kena tahu dulu alright okay so uh, macam macam saya dah cakap tadi kan itu jadi uh, this explain all okay contohnya kalau uh, okay brachialis is, is flexion kan? okay contohnya dekat sini kan lesion dia okay example uh, uh, lesion lesion ada dekat sini so can can you guess what what the lesion ah and okay uh, one can one can differentiate ada orang boleh boleh cakap yang we can divide into high lesion and low lesion okay tapi uh, yang yang tu dia, saya tak jumpa classification yang apa uh, apa yang dikatakan high lesion dengan low lesion yang betul-betul lah tapi uh, setakat ni kita boleh anggap dekat sini ah dekat kawasan yang elbow elbow joint ni kalau above this is high lesion bawah ni low lesion lah lepas tu ada orang classify lagi very high lesion okay very high lesion which is atasnya which is uh, sampai dah affect tricep okay so kalau kalau dia very high lesion contoh kan okay it affects all ni patient tak boleh nak angkat tangan pun huh? sebab tricep is extensor of the uh, extensor of the arm kan uh, patient uh, presented with dia tak boleh ang nak angkat tangan di semua tu kalau dekat dekat sini yang ni uh, mana lah uh, essential carpi radialis radialis longus yang affected so uh, patient cannot present with wrist drop ah kan wrist drop susah nak tulis pakai ni micrography ah tak apa ah betul kalau dekat sini kan posterior interosseous nerve okey patient present with finger drop 
Okay. So dal dalam banyak banyak dalam banyak banyak nerve ni, at least down ni ah, extensor kapal radius longus, posterior interosseous nerve. Okay, dah. This is this explains all lah actually. Alright. Okay. Ah uh, next is the the sensory end. Tadi motor motor generally is extensor presented with wrist drop ataupun tricep ni finger drop. For the uh, sensory part, okay. Yang dia, dia ada ni, tapi yang paling saya rasa yang paling signifikan is the uh, superficial sensory radial nerve. Okay. So, because superficial sensory nerve tadi kita dah tengok kan. Okay. Dia pecah kepada posterior interruption nerve dengan superficial sensory radial nerve. Okay. Yang ni sampai pergi ke kita punya uh, apa tu nama dia? Radial snuff box kita ha, sampai ke dia jauh lah dia pergi. Okay. Jadi uh, bila macam tu. So uh, the one is affected is at the uh, radial side. Uh, radial side of the dorsal aspect, dorsal aspect of the radial, radial side of the uh, two uh, two and half fingers. Uh, okay, kat sini lah maksudnya. Okay. Dan dan usually kita check yang pakai pakai yang apa tu stick tu kan dekat dekat kawasan radial snuff box. Uh, itu kalau kalau examination lah. Okay. So uh, kita dah boleh tahu apa yang kita nak examine lah. Kita examine uh, finger extension of finger, kita examine uh, extension of wrist kita, untuk sensory, kita examine dekat sini, cocok kat sini sekali ok, kalau intact, intact dah, that is uh, as a general, general lah kan, for radial nerve so senang sebenarnya ok, uh, this is uh, uh, wrist drop, ok, sekarang kita pergi kat, kat clinical feature lah, macam ni lah, patient uh, dia apa, kita compare uh, if you want to know ada wrist drop, kita compare kan uh, sebelah dengan lagi sebelah kalau sini, uh, lesion, lesion dia dekat sini lah, right Okay, uh, this is uh, example finger drop due to posterior interosseous nerve nerve fasci. Kan? Dia boleh dia boleh extend apa? Dia, dia boleh extend, tapi dia finger finger dia yang drop. So kita ni posterior interosseous. Alright. Okay. So now kita dah tahu clinical feature kan? Okay, and then uh, we want to go to the. Sorry, I I I miss the part. Why that they boleh extend the wrist tapi tak ada extend the finger? Oh, uh, because of. Uh, yang dekat sini uh, dia punya lesion dia is is a low, is a low lesion which is on the, the only affected is the posterior interosseous nerve so uh, the posterior inter, interosseous nerve branch into extensor of, of the finger kalau uh, more proximal than that is unaffected so yang uh, more proximal than that kita ada extensor calparis longus so extensor calparis oh. longus is not affected so uh, patient tak ada tak ada pun risk drop sebenarnya actually um saya kata you are right tapi cumanya kena 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 uh, macam mana aku nak cakap dia bukan salah apa it's just that when you have only one ECRL kita punya extension ada ECU ECRL ECRB okey hmm. so bila ECRL saja yang firing so you actually see walaupun the wrist extension tetapi dia lebih kepada the index finger punya side yang ternaik yang the other side tu macam tak berapa naik sangat faham tak So instead of you, if if you put your uh, forearm in front of you and you extend your wrist properly, and then you just drop a bit the other side, ah, uh, that's what it looks like. So dia macam lebih kepada tangan tu separuh boleh extended. Oh okay. Jadi uh... Uh, so if you see, it, you will know it. Macam eh, hey, welcome. That's why in hand examination, ideally you if you can, you can compare it if you're not sure. So if you do both sides kan akan nampak eh kenapa macam satu ni macam extend tapi macam tak ikhlas dia extend dia. So one of the possibility is because of uh, this kind of lesion. Huh? Oh. Okay thank you mister. Okay, so uh, we drop okay. Uh, okay lepas tu and then uh, clinical feature dah kita dah saya harap kita dah jelas lah. Okay and then uh, is the causes of uh, the radial nerve fasci. Okay so causes uh, actually actually any causes of the uh, of the nerve, nerve injury lah uh, sekejap eh Waalaikumsalam. Uh, okay actually uh, any causes of the uh, uh, any causes of the nerve, nerve injury okay sebenarnya kita uh, mind you back yang kita ada kita ada yang nerve injury kita ada tiga jenis kan according to set, set criteria okay yang first is the neuro neuropraxia okay lepas tu axonal axonomexis dengan Uh, apa dia tu ah? Allah masalah apa? Dari tu jap. Neuromaxis. Ah uh, neuromaxis. Okey, tu kan. Okey. Jadi uh, when when we say okey, saya classify macam ni, trauma iatrogenik dengan idiopathic dengan miscellaneous sebab saya miscellaneous ni 
dia boleh jadi macam contoh example only compression compression at the uh, compression of the macam sebab pakai jam ketat sangat kan compression to the yang superficial sensory radial nerve tu boleh boleh ada radial nerve palsy juga ha, macam tu so yang tu saya tak tahu nak nak sebab kat mana okey jadi generally trauma dengan ya tu ni okey trauma you name it lah trauma not just the motor vehicle accident tapi any kinds of trauma contoh macam uh, jatuh daripada bangunan ke tu terkena dekat tangan kan jatuh uh, or any injury to the dekat kawasan elbow betul ada contoh macam laceration ke dekat dekat kawasan radial head tu ialah kawasan posterior interosseous nerve kena dekat situ uh, so uh, can cause also or just simple macam kena punch ke ah uh, itu pun boleh menyebabkan an, a degree of neuropraxia juga okey and then uh, iatrogenic which is commonly seen also contoh as example patient ada macam uh, humor fracture, fracture before this and then we do open reduction internal fixation tiba-tiba patient ada wrist drop okay so we might want to suspect that patient have radial nerve palsy also okay betul idiopathic okay this is uh, in general okay later we, we will go to the detail lah alright uh, so so ni detail okay uh, example satu saturday night palsy okay biasa uh, dekat Malaysia kita tak tak jumpa sangat lah sebab uh, there is we tak ada sangat kes yang drinking-drinking eh tapi kalau dekat negara luar banyak ah uh, nama dia Saturday night Saturday night palsy because of because of the indah nampak uh, apa tu compression compression dekat sini new new neuropraxia lah ni neuropraxia okey compression dekat kawasan sini so patient biasa ni very high lesion ah so patient tak boleh nak angkat tangan pun hmm. jadi uh, usually for Saturday night, night palsy it resolves spontaneously so The, the thing we, sebab dia neuropraxia so it results for tenure so we just reassurance ya yeah, and wait and watch okay and lepas tu ah this is uh, more yang more severe bila humerus fracture okay any dekat mana lah humerus fracture ah contoh uh, kalau dekat ni macam, macam tadi yang awal-awal tadi kita tengok dekat distal kan dekat distal lah ni dekat dekat mid okay so uh, humerus fracture example and can cause trap of the radial nerve kat sini so can cause uh, uh, radial nerve palsy also Okay, ha. yang ni yang kita cakap tadi, nama dia Holstein uh, Lewis Fracture Okay, example, dia disebabkan oleh compression, compression juga, neuropraxia Dekat uh, kawasan sini lah Nampak, ni, ni, ni distorted, okay, spiral fracture Lepas tu dia terperangkap kat situ, our radial nerve Okay, ha. lepas tu ni, uh, ha, contoh supracondyla humerus fracture pun boleh jadi juga Ni kalau dekat sini, dia mainly affect medial nerve, tapi kalau dia bahagian bagi radial side ha, dia dia boleh macam extend kat sini lepas tu have a degree of neuropraxia juga boleh so injury lah dekat situ kan and result in radial nerve palsy okay ha, next is kalau uh, this one is uh, tak tahu lah uh, not common lah okay uh, during my time dekat apa uh, posting auto lu tak pernah jumpa langsung kan hmm. So uh, kalau yang macam ulnar nerve dia ada guion guion canal ni. Kalau median nerve kita ada kapal tunnel lah. Ha, kalau kalau ni pun dia nak ada tunnel juga radial nerve. Okey. So the the, the spinal tissue nama dia dekat sini tempat spinal tissue. Ni ni memang physiological dia akan masuk ke sini lah. However bila uh, macam ada some something happen lah yang menyebabkan dia jadi ter terlampau ketat kan. Ha tu boleh menyebabkan spinal tissue sini tapi uh, this one is uh, dekat dalam buku dia cakap rare. Okay, ha, ni pun sama. Sensory radial nerve palsy, isolated sensory radial nerve palsy ataupun nama dia Wartenberg syndrome. Also also rare, only affect the superficial sensory radial nerve je. Ha, ni yang saya cakap tadi contoh kalau pakai jam ketat sangat kan dekat sini. Ha, boleh boleh jadi tu. Okey. Alright. Ha lepas tu ha, ni uh, saya nak nak tunjuk je sebab sebab saya rasa ni style lah gambar ni. Dia uh, nama the name is out trigger sprain, okey. Uh, it is one of the sebab uh, because sometimes uh, we we also see this in the wild. Uh, saya pernah tengok ni sekali lah. Uh, nama dia out trigger spin. Function the function is to uh, when patient has radial nerve palsy, the is some sort of physiotherapy to prevent contracture. Sebab sebab patient tak boleh nak ada wrist drop, patient cannot extend the, the fingers and the, and the wrist. So uh, the function is to prevent contracture satu. Satu lagi prevent the hyper extension of the of the nerve of the nerve yang injet tu okey so dia dia boleh itulah function dia okey so uh, uh, this is my reference from anatomy ni anatomy and so, apa hyper extension of the nerve ah uh, 
Have to extension of the effect uh, yang effect tu nampak? Apa extension tu nampak tak paham? Uh, maksudnya uh, saya tahu sebab saya yang yang jawapan saya tengok dekat YouTube saya dia, dia cakap hmm. uh, prevent hyper extension of the uh, radial nerve tu yang yang affected supaya dia tak lagi lagi damage. Okey. Hmm. Ya. Hmm. Tapi prevent contraction okay. tu betul lah. Hmm. Well, actually the reason is because if you can imagine your hand is supposed to flex and extend. Your wrist is supposed to flex and extend. Tetapi as a result of the nerve of the radial nerve injury, you cannot wrist extend, you cannot finger extend. So as a result, what happens? Tangan akan setiasa ke bawah, wrist akan setiasa ke bawah. Betul? Betul. So if you leave it that way, what happens? Tendons tu akan, in a way, can, they can go into adhesion, the, stiff, the joint can become stiff, hanya because the wrist is not extended. Faham? Because tendon tu tak boleh nak glide, nerve tak boleh nak glide because everything is just flexed. So what the this dynamic split does is that it puts your hand your the, the patient's uh, hand and wrist in an extended position. So apa yang patient hanya perlu buat ialah menggunakan the median nerve and the ulnar nerve untuk grip. So what you have is that you have normal movement. So therefore you preserve soft tissue, kurangkan bengkak, kurangkan swelling. You allow the tendon and nerve to glide so there won't be any adhesion. Okay. And at the same time when you do that, tak akan dapat stiffness lah. Hmm. Alright. Contohnya kalau katakan buat surgery ke apa ke, nerve dah baik Tapi sebabkan patient tak pergi physiotherapy atau delete kita punya intervention, patient dapat stiffness So, the rehabilitation will be much more poorer Okay, thank you Mr. Tapi uh, yang for this, we only do in the case of uh, yang uh, apa tu, exonomatis and neuromatis lah Mr kan Kalau neuropraxis saja dia boleh baik sendiri jadi uh, tak perlulah eh Yep, yes, yes, ini macam tu lah Okay Alright, okay, uh, thank you, thank you all Itu sajalah sebenarnya Sikit je Want to keep your annotation Keep Eh Alright, uh, I bagi the floor to the MC tadi. Or if there is any question, we can uh, discuss about it. Uh, I have a question. Uh, okay. Uh, sorry. Um, this is, uh, I've read in Apple mentioned that in uh, compressive uh, posterior interosseous nerve uh, neuropathy, mentioned that there will be two uh, pattern of presentation. Either it can be a pin compressive syndrome with a predominant motor, so the motor only, and also another one would be the sensory only known as the uh, radial tunnel syndrome. Um, my question is that because the compressed nerve is actually the PIN, why does it lead to um, two different uh, clinical uh, pathology? Because I thought that the same nerve is be compressed, why does one have motor, one have sensory? Pandai mm, pun. Please Allah. To, to, to the minute your pun je Because Apple is wrong So if you compress the superficial rate So Wartenberg syndrome memang compress purely superficial radial nerve Tak ada kaitan pun dengan posterior interosseous nerve Manakala posterior interosseous nerve is due to injury Due to the posterior interosseous nerve indirectly Sama ada radial head fracture ke elbow dislocation ke whatever lah Okay but it's two different, in, it, it's two different entity So it's not like you injure one nerve Boleh dapat ni boleh dapat ni no Strong. Ini dia mister yang radial tunnel syndrome dengan uh, pin compression syndrome tu um, is a totally different entity tapi dia by the same nerve ke macam mana mister? No no pin compression I've never heard of pin compression syndrome but I've heard of pin neuropathy lah basically it's because of like injuries of to the radial head, the radial neck so you have injury to the PIN nerve so PIN nerve no jig lah kan so macam mana tadi uh, kita ni Arif cakap tadi tetapi in the cases of radial tunnel syndrome it is where the nerve itself passes into a particular structure so bila that nerve passes into the structure dia tak kacau pun pin if you look at the the, the gambar rajah pun pin belakang apa 
more proximally so it's actually a purely motor punya deficiency eh, sorry sensory sorry alright thank you mister Uh, mister, kita punya PN kita is purely motor kan Mister? So tak ada kaitan dengan sensory lah kan? Ya yeah, betul. Tapi bila korang belajar masters nanti ada lah belajar bahawa uh, AIN and PIN is actually sensory tetapi dia sensory hanya untuk joint saja. So it's actually uh, apa nama ni? Apa? What was that test score yang kau gerak-gerak tadi? Proprioception. Okay, thank you Mister. So tetapi in your level tak ya AIN PIN purely motor settle. Dah. Ada lagi ke tak ada? Ah boleh tak ask just now uh, Nuri ada mention about neuropraxia as an MSC dengan neuropraxis apa? Neuromaxis kan? So I would like to ask regarding um macam mana kita monitor patient post op lah basically and then uh, whether to detect uh, how do we detect okay uh, we detect that by tina sign kan isn't it whether it is neuropathy is an MSC ataupun kita by EMG okay so um, post op tak ada cara nak monitor this is not like some vessel punya anastomosis kau tengok ada capillary refill time ke macam tu dia tak ada nerve punya repair you repair you pray cukup Uh, tiga, uh, enam minggu you tengok whether or not there is because patient ada nerve injury whatever it is it, um, exonet masses and neurot masses will yield some uh, will yield a uh, uh, tinnel sign kalau neuropraxia tak ada tinnel sign sebab tinnel sign hanya akan ada kalau ada raw nerve ending iaitu nerve yang injet lah okay so cara dia ialah, contohnya kita buat operation per patient so kita tahu Um, let's say around 3 cm kita buat repair nerve tu so by right if you like after you see at 6 weeks 3 months nerve tu sepatutnya dah makin tumbuh ke arah tangan lah kan so when you do the tinnel sign it should be moving forward kalau tiba-tiba tinnel sangka berhenti atau was not even moving from the first place that means it has formed a neuroma tu saja. Okay, thank you Mr. So basically buat tinnitus sign Mr. Eh? Kalau tak pasti baru kita proceed dengan EMG isn't it? Not really. So for me, I will only do EMG and nerve conduction study if I'm not sure about the diagnosis. Macam you have multiple nerves affected kan? Macam tak logik one patient ada so many nerves to be compressed at the same time. So it could be from the cervical region. So you may want to consider doing a EMG atau CT scan atau MRI of the cervical area. Tapi, if you do tinnel sign, it's just to see whether or not A is the nerve injury. Kalau kau tap, contoh mesh, patient ada couple tunnel syndrome. You're sure patient ada couple tunnel syndrome based on the classical features. But when you do the tinnel sign, it does not give you any tinnel. Tinnel is negative. So what could it be? It could be that the couple tunnel syndrome is there. It's just that it is a transient compression. Kejap-kejap, compress. Kata bila patient rest atau dia bubuh tangan in position tertentu, Compression dia is relief. Jadi tak cukup untuk merosakkan nerve tu. Untuk cause valerian degeneration. So, tinnel is negative lah. Tetapi in some patients, di mana nerve dia compress because of the thickening, thicken, flexor, carpal, apa, transverse carpal ligament, then baru ada exonate masses ke, neurot masses ke, ah, maka yang tu yang neurot masses not likely lah. Exonate masses because you may have some exons which is injured, injured due to ischemia. Uh, then when you do the tinnel sign, it will be positive. Okay, and the steps there. Thank you, Mister. Ada lagi soalan? Kalau tak ada soalan, kita boleh proceed dengan Muhanna. Suara Muhanna? Dengar? Oh, tak, dengar tanya orang Jimmy. Dengar tak Suara Muhanna? Dengar. Hmm. 
Mana cakap sikit Dengar, dengar Tapi kerasang tu Baik kerasang tu macam mana Macam mana nak kurangkan Hmm, saya bunyi dia kuat sangat dah Tapi kerasang dia tengah bunyi speaker ni Sekejap Sekejap ya Sekarang Hmm, cuba try cakap Uh, dengar Okay, boleh tak someone please present the slide Sekejap, Muhara dengar suara orang tak? Saya dengar suara orang semua jelas okay. But my voice sounds different Tak salah, saya akan dengar apa saya tahu <laughs> Okay, uh, just someone please present slides So, so itu, uh, aku dengar mm. orang balik So, media nak palsi So, boleh buka. Next slide. My content, saya akan first cerita pasal course dulu. And then supply. And then uh, couple tanya syndrome, physical examination, low vision versus high vision. So, saya cakap, kena cakap slow-slow. Okay, uh, for course. Next slide please. Okay, so this start daripada brachial plexus, medial and lateral cord. So C5 until T1. T1 ni dia not consistent pin distribution lah. But it's okay. So in arm, dia akan run in medial arm. Okay, medial to our biceps and brachialis. And then dia akan cross the brachial artery. And then dia nak masuk forearm, enter the forearm under the bicep aponeurosis. So the one yang I highlight in red is actually the sites for possible compression which can cause median nerve palsy. Okay, right? So that's one. Okay, bila in the forearm, they will run between two head of pronator terrace. So if ada compression uh, dekat sini, pronator syndrome lah usually. Okay, so the one that I pull itu is actually the uh, kita punya apa? branches ok so AI hand akan berpecah dari situ and then runs along the anterior interosseous artery between FDP and FPL ok so median nerve proper akan continue dia punya journey under arch of uh, flexor digitorum superficialis ok and then dia akan become sandwich between FDP and FPL into couple tanya Okay, so before the enter the couple tunnel tu, ada satu makhluk ni will divide, which is palma cutaneous branch. Uh, 5 cm proximal dia akan keluar and runs between the FCR and MPL. Okay, so tadi yang dah masuk dalam couple tunnel tu, they will become motor, reca motor recurrent branch. Tapi issue with the motor recurrent branch, there is a variant in anatomy lah. Some, uh, most of them divides after the hour TCL but some ada under or through. So this is one yang uh, Mr. Yudjuri cakap uh, risk of injury lah during our carpenter release. Okay, so after the hand, they will supply the sensory lah. Okay, so next slide. Okay. So gambar ni, boleh tengok dia punya cost dia daripada uh, brachial plexus sampailah ke kapal tanah. Okay, yang the one on the right tu, saya nak tunjukkan uh, side of compression. So, nampak the one in the bone, ligament of stratus, lacertus fibrosus, okay, pronator teres muscles. Okay, so dekat arch of FDS kat situ and kapal tanah. Okay, semua ni kena ingat for side of compression. Okay, so next. Okay, kita dah settle dengan cost kita. So, now is supply. Supply ada dua. Motor and sensory. Okay, but the supply, ingat, there's none in arm. Okay, so the one in the red is actually for forearm. Yang the yellow is for uh, wrist or hand lah. So, medium nerve proper. Supplies anterior compartment. So, yang ni ni, boleh tengok, uh, Prolator Terrace, FCR, Palmaris Longus dengan FDS. So dia punya action saya dah buat uh, according tu lah. So PT, Pronet and Flex for Arm. FCR, Flex Wrist in Nodial Division. Palmaris Longus, Flex Wrist. And of course our beautiful FDS, Flex BMPG. Okay so semua ni nanti kita akan test waktu physical examination.
So in AIM, dia akan supply deep flexes. FTP to second and third digit. So dia akan flex di IPJ. Which actually the other one akan supply pakai Alna tadi lah. So FPL, flex some uh, interfalanger joint and pronator coordinators, pronate for arm juga. Uh, so for motor recurrent branch, ingat dia supply loaf muscles. So L for lumbricals, radial 2 and then O for opponent policies, ABB abductor policies brevis and FBB flexor uh, policies brevis but only the superficial heat because some uh, uh, deep 2 akan supply by uh, the ulna nerve. So uh, for OP, opus thumb, ABB abductum. FBB tam MCB flexion which is usually kita tak test because dia confuse sama ada ulna ke medium. So intrinsic uh, sama uh, extend PIPJ and flex MCPJ but usually pun sama uh, uh, maksudnya dia sama macam ulna. Okay next. So untuk sensory Okay so for sensory tadi uh, Mr. already mentioned that AIM have no sensory Ah, tapi ini abaikan je lah Wala risk capsule tu So ada Okay boleh tengok kat situ Kan tadi I mentioned Before they enter couple tunnel They will give this palma cutaneous branches Okay which will supply our palm On the radial side So gambar bawah Okay gambar bawah tu So dia akan supply By the palma cutaneous branch and palm Okay for digital branches Dia akan supply by palma digital branches Okay, so supply yang bawah tu proper palma digital branch is the dorsal yang belakang tu, gambar atas. Stop mon, I'm sorry. Okay, so next. Alright, this is couple tunnel punya anatomy. So you have to remember this, the border, roof we have our trumpus couple ligament, the floor we have the central couple bones. Uh, and then the medial, we see form and hemet, which is at, at hemet, the hook of hemet tu, the narrowest point for the median nerve to pass lah. For lateral, trapezium and scaphoid. Uh, if, if you remember, actually, I don't really like this mnemonic, but uh, someone use it uh, to hafal this couple bone. So, she looks too pretty, try to catch her. So, she looks so pretty too for the uh, proximal and try to catch her too is for this day. Let's call it. Okay, itulah. So, for contents, we have 10 contents. 9 tendons, 1 nerve. Okay, boleh tengok lah. Okay, next. <coughs> Sorry. Okay, so next is Kapatana syndrome which is very famous. So it is actually a symptoms associated with compression of median nerve at the wrist which will cause ischemia and will result kita punya neurological symptoms too. More common in women more than men, 50 to 50 years old. Okay, next. So in history, apa yang kita nak tanya? So most common presentation is numbness and tingling at the radial three half fingers. Sebab another one half is by Ana. So second is pain. Bila the severe of numbness tu, so sana patient akan datang dengan pain. So follow dengan Socrates. So it's a median nerve distribution. Usually at night, it's neuropathic pain. So it's burning. No radiation usually. If ada radiation, think of upper lesion such as spine lesion. A. Elevated. They will elevate it by hanging the arm over the side of the bed or by shaking the arm. It's usually intermittent and the exacerbating factor is wrist flexion. When we kink or we stretch lagi, the median nerve to become more prominent the pain and sometimes also numbness lah. So grasping activity such as writing, reading newspaper, driving, usually macam kita dengar apa tukar cahit, teller, cikgu, clerk writer, uh, so semua tu lah. And it will usually increase in severity uh, apa kita kata uh, uh, bias. Lama-lama dia makin teruk. Uh, so, uh, three 
clumsiness ni dia selit lah dia akan datang motor masalah clumsiness or weakness especially in fine manipulation dia akan complain oh saya nak macam semakin cemekap lah I should drop things ah, macam tu so next the distal inter 
financial join of the index finger tu so tak boleh flex nampak kan so and then the thumb uh, FPL they should be able to flex the IP join of the thumb but this patient cannot so dia pelik sikit dia punya ok sign dia so this is screening so we know oh most likely it is a median nerve punya problem so next we do our inspection so look for deformity loss of normal thumb abduction so kalau semua orang tengok tangan semua orang sekarang in relaxed position we slightly abducted our thumb but patient median nerve palsy dia macam uh, the thumb tu abducted so macam ape hand I said oh selalu tak gambar uh, tak apa, apa nanti boleh google and then deformity yang suggest cause macam RA ataupun fracture, botulnya dengan suan neck so boleh tengok gambar paling bawah tu tu RA patient lah so nampak dia punya tu ada anal deviation tu nampak swelling dekat MCPG dia uh, semua tu lah ok, so benediction sign benediction signs ni is for apa actually, for not CTS tapi kita akan tengok juga so what happen ada fingers boleh flex ok, tapi the thumb and index tu cannot flex so bila kita ask patient to uh, clench clench fist and release tiba-tiba kita nampak apa ni uh, ada kita punya pointing finger pointing finger yang tu tu okay. but uh, to add uh, actually why the the middle finger can still flex Although we say the half of middle finger to uh, supply by middle nerve Sebab FTP for of middle finger tu They share with the other punya uh, ring dengan Apa nama sendiri? Little finger uh, So that's why they still slightly flex But for index cannot FTP is not functioning And on top of that they have two extensor punya tendon yang add on So they tak boleh flex Okay, next is Westy Tina Eminence uh, Ada gambar kat atas tu, Tina Atrophy And then if upper lesion, look at the flexors at radial side Okay uh, Next is Wally Macam ganglion, lipoma, RA And last is CARS lah Whether any illustration or patient actually already uh, then uh, release on the other hand So next, this So this is a scar what I'm trying to say is that look carefully because uh, uh, if the operation done very beautifully, the scar is not really prominent. We may miss it. So, boleh nampak gambar yang the right side tu. On the left side, kita nampak lah sebab ada suture lagi. But on the right side, macam uh, kita macam oh, ada ke tak ada. So, so, please look carefully. And sometimes, I'm not sure if Malaysia buat ke tak. Uh, sometimes ada endoscopic punya approach so dia punya scar is not at the classical lateral to our palmar crease dia macam around the wrist sikit uh, gambar yang uh, yeah. uh, thank you so next so palpation because our DDX is there no sign of itis right so check for any inflammatory signs RA pun boleh jadi ada macam ni temperature, tenderness all the joint, palpate the joint on the uh, ventral, the ventral part. Okay, so next. So move. Ingat balik, motor supply kita ada three nerves. We have loaf, and for four arm, we have AIN and median nerve proper. So for loaf, check, usually uh, check for ATB, abduct the thumb. Ingat yang kita suruh akad temukan dengan jari kita. And then oppose the thumb and look kalau ada collapse weakening AIN uh, okay sign but we have to check also the uh, FTP and FPL lah so for FTP oh nanti ada oh praktikal saya tak apa-apa so next is median nerve proper so FTS just check one finger is enough sebab so, uh, this apply all the fingers punya FTS and FCRV for high lesion lah Okay, so next. So, sensation. So, ini penting. So, ini akan differentiate high dengan low lesion. Like I mentioned before, 
before enter couple kana dari satu makhluk Palma Cutinous Branch dia akan keluar and supply the farm so only in upper nation the farm akan affected so in couple kana the sensory deficit is in only the finger okay so next okay special test so we have Fallon, reverse Fallon, Darken Carpal Compression, and Thinner Side. Fallon test. So we stretch, we stretch the nerve. Uh, gambar dia ialah yang, yang atas sekali, yang nombor dua. Ah, okay, tu. So we flex the wrist, one minute. But sometimes 30 seconds, patient already complain of numbness and persisia. We can also reverse Fallon, yang gambar first tadi. Ah, okay. So yang last kali, darken couple compression. Oh, sudah tak gambar. But I think the last slide tu boleh kot cuma slightly different daripada approach kita. Gambar picture yang the third one on the first one. Usually we press the median nerve at couple tunnel. Uh, usually 30 second to 1 minute. And if we modify, boleh waktu kita compress tu, kita flexkan lagi wrist dia. So lagi cepat dia rasa, oh kebas-kebas. So, darken couple compression. And then, tinnel sign macam biasa lah. Tap the volaris. And then, uh, to exclude the fresh diagnosis, we can check for upper motor neural nation. Uh, it's a, a suggest cervical myelopathy, open test and also lemak and spurling. So, the last picture tu actually for open test lah. So, we flick the middle finger, uh, the IPJ, into flexion. Usually, the thumb and the index finger tu macam ni apa-apa lah. Relax je lah. But then in fashion with sebagai malu peti, tiba-tiba uh, uh, thumb dengan index tu kadang dia flex. Uh, macam tu, 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 tu. Fizia ke? In a way lah. Uh, so next. Okay, so this is actually, tadi kita punya DDS also is pronator kan? So this provocative test for pronator. So we we check for the pertama resisted elbow flexion with forearm spinated. Uh, what, so what we are trying to do is actually we try to make the nerve compress between the side yang I mentioned before. So basic bit apa neurosis cara dia adalah we uh, uh, gambar yang yang uh, yang last sekali. So yang last the fibrosis tu. So resisted elbow flexion with forearm spinated. So kita uh, suruh patient bengkokkan elbow apa? Siku. Oh, siku. Siku. Uh, bengkokkan siku and kita try tarik. So kalau ada numbness and paresthesia, so positive. Second, resisted for our pronation with elbow extension. Ini we try to compress the nerve between the two head of pronator teres. So gambar yang kedua tu. So kita ask patient, keep pronate. Pusing lah kot, tak tak cakap sana macam mana. And then we try to spine it. So kalau tiba patient complain of numbness atau reproduction of symptoms, it's positive. And last sekali, resisted middle finger PIPJ flexion which we try to compress between the FDS arch. Gambar yang first tu. Okay, so next. So this is a uh, cannibal sign that I mentioned before. Boleh tengok nanti. The first gambar yang lelaki tu is actually our spelling test for sebagai malapeti and in the last case um, is lemak. Is there something wrong because I cannot see the slide? Huh? Saya tak nampak slide okay. pun. Is it just happen that Ke Mr. Terpin orang lain? Ya, yeah, I think. Sekejap okay, lah. Uh, boleh nampak sekarang? Okey je masuk tadi boleh nampak. Boleh lah. Mr. boleh nampak. Jadi Mr. Terpin, anyone? Sorry, tak, tak, tak nampak apa pun. Mr. Mr. Yang, do you think yang, any... Yang, any, yang any presenter side kat Mozakir kan? Ya. Yeah. Okay. Oh. 
Tak perlu tekan kat muka dia memang kat muka sakit tapi nampak gambar kaki ke apa gambar profile picture gambar kasut dia je. Lagi muka kaki. Muka kaki yang presentation. Mozak presentation. Dah tekan dah tiga kali dah tak ada. Mozak and present baru present balik Mozak. Okay, dia. Ya. Something wrong. Sekejap saya keluar balik. Lepas tu saya masuk balik. Sekejap ya. Ah, okay. Baru dia kata Muhammad Zaki presenting. Baru keluar. Okay, okay. Alright. Thank you. Okay. Alright. So, this is uh, the one that I see carnival signs for denosinovitis. So, so this DG I don't know like sugar. Ah, terima kasih. Okay. So next, add a pin to percussion or palpation around around the flexor tendon and it with passive extension and patient also help in that passive flexion punya finger so the first gambar oh actually because I put my DDX is uh, denosinovitis hmm. it's not likely lah uh, ni sebab you see carnival sign is infection so that if, if you give me Carnival sign and you talk about flexor tendons of arthritis in a uh, couple tendons in a patient I don't think I would be very happy at that point of time. It's like, kenapa jauh sangat kau pergi? It's like macam oh, kau tengok right. diabetic food, baru kau kata patient is differential diagnosis is cancer. Uh, okay. Uh, so so that's can... because you see carnival sign is specific, the one finger sausage shape, the swollen of the finger. Lepas tu dia punya nature of the roster. Kapal tanah mana ada benda tu? Kapal tanah is just a normal hand which has numbness. Alright. Okay, I'm sorry. So, so next, so ada uh, gambar lelaki tu ialah tadi yang saya cakap uh, spelling test and then bawah tu ialah folamide. Okay, so next. So this is my table for uh, deficient in low versus high vision. So causes low carpal tunnel syndrome with adults and cuts in front of wrist, carpal dislocation. For high causes, much like for arm fracture, elbow dislocation, or step, uh, steps or gunshot. Uh, high knee yang sama ada AIN atau pronator syndrome. Posture, both of them have loss of thumb abduction, but in high vision, we expect either pointing index sign or benediction sign. Wasting, in low, we expect a uh, thinner aminate Oh, in, in chronic, in chronic uh, case, for high nation, we expect also the flexor and pronator uh, atrophy. And then for motor and movement, uh, both of them are unable to abduct and oppose them. But in high nation, we expect also the paralysis of long flexors to thumb, uh, index finger, middle finger, and also paralysis of FCR and PT. So sensory, uh, sensory for low in Italy, so check up. Low lesion only on the fingers, three finger, uh, three half fingers. While in high lesion, we expect thinner eminence affected juga sensory dia. Sama macam konsep macam Alna tadi. For special test, low we do thinner, phalanx and and the cane. High tadi yang I already mentioned yang pronator provocative test tu. So next, ada lagi ke? Oh, investigation ni sama sama je. Next. Treatment, I think pun lebih kurang sama. So, activity modification, spleen at night, and see uh, if patient one we can do uh, cortisone injection. Actually, triopsinolon and also ninoke injection. And last kali, surgical release, like Mr. already mentioned, kalau chronic case, sudah ada atrophy, impact motor, and then mungkin persistent uh, persistia hindrance to the patient, suggest for carpal tunnel release. Saya rasa tak ada. Next. Okay. So, any question?
I have a question relating to carpal tunnel syndrome. Um, is there any reason why the pain exacerbated at night and why it is relieved by shaking the hand and making the hand on a dependent position? Thank you. Oh, uh, why? So that was what I do. So why patient actually relieve the pain and numbness by shaking at hanging the arm over the side? Because uh, actually in early uh, early stage, much like uh, Mister mentioned before, what to do? Mungkin just neuropraxia. So actually, why there is ischemia, because compression, okay, what to risk the flex, and also because of some circulatory punya um, disturbance. So when we shake the arm, which we like uh, uh, movement increase, so more circulation to to the nerve. So they much like ischemia to relief. Uh, but why at night too? I'm not sure. Unless it's just because patient was resting and it's more prominent. I'm not sure. Mister? Oh, because it's not So, usually, if we're in the morning, patient doesn't have a hand on the hand. We're not in the hand on the hand on the hand on the hand. And at the same time, when you sleep, your breathing pattern is much more shallower. So, when it's more shallow, uh, the oxygen concentration is lower, so ischemia has a higher tendency to develop. Oh, interesting. Uh, next, Lekika. Okay, tak ada dah. Thank you all. Terima kasih. Sorry. Okay. Dah tak ada soalan eh? Uh, kalau tak ada kita boleh proceed dengan uh, hand PE punya topik je. Hmm, untuk hand PE kita proceed dengan Q&A je. Ada soalan ke pasal PE? Kita buka question untuk Mister. Ada soalan ke? Mister, I have a question regarding finger cascade during our inspection. Um, in uh, Apple mentioned that it is to rule out tendon injury. Uh, can it be used to for any other compressive neuropathy of the hand? Uh, is there any diagnostic value for the other pathology? Thank you, Mister. Uh, most of the time, kita guna hanya untuk tendon injury. Kalau nak guna untuk specific, for example, another no, I I don't think so, kot, sebab Biasanya kalau ala nerve, you nampak claw hand. Kalau median nerve, you nampak tina twisting. So, cascade ni biasanya you tengok, -tengok dia punya increasing uh, apa, apa sorry, uh, yeah, dia punya increasing flexion of the fingers. So, I, I'd say that's more for tendon injuries. Thank you, Mister. Uh, mesti saya nak tanya soalan Kalau uh, Patient tu datang Contoh kan uh, Datang dengan Gangliosis ke apa Kita buat ke semua uh, Pasal nerve punya Examination hmm. I focus more on If you have a ganglion patient You focus more on ni Lumps and bumps yes, Tapi yes. kalau you just nak tengok Based on the location Contohnya If it's a a uh, 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 lump on the flexor surface and yeah i would recommend you check like at least the maiden nerve then you can see that i would like to check for the maiden nerve simply because it's on the flexor side and there could be compression there sure, lah. yeah. as long as you do something other reason you boleh discuss dengan examiner okay problem is bila yeah. korang buat korang sendiri pun tak sure kenapa korang buat benda tu betul betul tanya kenapa korang buat macam ni uh, yeah. memang ambil lah. Lepas tu kalau dia punya instruction is to um, examine the hand, kita akan expose only up to elbow ke sampai shoulder juga? At least mid arm. Because mid -arm. if you expose only up to the elbow, uh, sometimes you miss uh, apa, lesions yang over the elbow itself. Uh, kalau patient lelaki suruh je lah buka baju senang habis cerita. Macam contohnya alan nerve kan, sometimes dia punya laceration wound dia into the form, apa, into the arm Atau tidak macam wrist drop, you tengok, examine the hand Nampak ada wrist drop, 
Tapi you think that the possible lesion is in the humerus. So kena check lagi awal. Hmm. Lagi atas. So shoulder exposure, possible. Uh, it may, may may give you some benefits. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Ada soalan lain tak pada orang? Uh, Mr. nak tanya. Nanti kan dalam exam, kalau RM nerve ke median nerve or radial nerve, kalau nanti bila kita nak buat diagnosis untuk long, uh, nak buat complete diagnosis, what should we say? Kalau macam median nerve, uh, cukup kerja uh, kardia apa? Uh, CTS only. And then kalau macam RM nerve tu, kita cakap dia high ke low lesion ke? Macam mana nak bagi complete diagnosis? So, if you you give your full diagnosis, you depends on what the diagnosis is lah. Kalau kau rasa macam, oh I think this is a median nerve compression, secondary to carpal tunnel. Or median nerve compression, secondary to laceration wound, mm -hmm. ah, sorry, compression. Median nerve injury, secondary to apa laceration wound. Kau boleh attack addition ke apa ke. Uh, because, yes, it can be. But because at the end of the day, is it median nerve compression? Yes, it's median nerve compression. What is the cause? Carpal tunnel syndrome. Ha? Jangan lupa pula left and right. Uh, high dengan lulusion kena beritahu ke Mister? Kalau high, kalau you kata carpal tunnel syndrome, dia tak mungkin high lesion, low lesion. Kalau ananas? Kalau ananas, if you say it's guyon tunnel, I would expect it to be a high lesion. So you can say ulnar nerve lesion, secondary to guyon tunnel atau cubita tunnel. Okay, thank you Mr. Ada lagi tu soalan? Soalan satu, soalan dua, soalan tiga. Tak ada dah kan? Kalau tak ada, hmm. kalau tak ada kita uh, dah boleh closing. Uh, terima kasih Mister sebab join hari ni. Minta maaf sebab ada technical error sikit awal tadi. Um, so, um, kita boleh kot tutup majlis kita dengan uh, tasbih khabaran surah Al-Az. Okay, all the best. Thank you, Mr. Thank you very much, Mr. Thank you, 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 Mr. Attendance tu semua eh. Jangan lupa kopi.